Hey guys, it's Morgan coming to you with another weekly schlag. We got the Arkansas Assassin in the house. He's right there. <laughs> Richard's working on his Husaberg. Uh, if you're new here, guys, this is the weekly shop vlog for Highland Cycles, a little shop here in Montrose, Colorado, where we do all kinds of cool stuff. We show you tool reviews, mail time, awesome parts, whatever. It's the day in the life or a week in the life of a small motorcycle shop is what this is. So if you got here because of some other uh, video that you watch, Baja video, review video, ride video, consider sticking around through this. Uh, this is what we do one every week. These come out on Mondays every week. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun. So if that sounds like fun, stick with us. Maybe consider a subscribe at the end. And here we go. Right, guys i know you've been waiting for it i've been waiting for it finally got a bunch of stuff out of the way it is time to work on the penton there it is this is a 1973 no i don't know why the numbers are like that but it's a 1973 penton six days 125 and this is all original i've been told um he said that the whole thing is how it came tires grips everything obviously it's a little rough you know whatever but it's in pretty freaking good shape. I think you guys would agree. So right now, first things first, we got to get that motor to turn over. It is locked up tight. Um, I don't know how long this has been sitting. I don't know what happened to it before. He doesn't either. The owner is obviously not the first. Well, I shouldn't say obviously. Uh, he is not uh, the original owner. Um, he's not old enough for that. <laughs> but uh, so motor's locked up, it's a Sax 125, and we are gonna dig in and see if we can't free it up. So I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, guys, I'm gonna start by taking things off of this thing. So we're gonna get this pipe off. I'm uh, gonna get, okay, I wanna get the uh, shifter and everything off and, think this is still probably the ignition cover i don't really don't know much about these old bikes i'm pretty sure this is still ignition cover got the clutch anyway i think what we want to do is get a um wrench or a you know socket on the end of the crank and then we're going to spray a whole bunch of penetrating lube down through the spark plug and uh, it's going to probably be a lot of sitting a lot of heat on the cylinder a lot of you know whatever I already took the, to get I took this right shock off. Oh, maybe. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the freaking carb on this thing. You can turn a Phillips into a flat blade if you need to. <laughs> That or the clip. All right, guys, so you saw what we were doing. A lot of heat, uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of um, penetrating oil, and uh, we got a little bit of movement. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, the piston is all the way at the top. It, there's no way for me to show you, but if you look in through the intake right here, you'll see the piston's all the way at the top. But, let me show you some cool stuff about this engine. Uh, pretty neat. This is the clutch here. Uh, and this actually is the actuator. It goes like that. Uh, and it pushes in to open up the clutch. Um, the actuator, anyway, down there. Pull the lever, pushes in, actuates the clutch. Here's the cool thing. So uh, right now, it's in top gear. I don't know what, we'll figure out what it is. So whatever, that's top gear. Now to shift, you go down and you can see the little uh that moving that's the like the thing that's moving the uh shift fork through the gears right there you got to kind of let me set you guys down hang on you got to kind of roll it while it, there we go there's so that's a gear so that's like Okay, there's the top gear. 
there's another one, so that's two, three, four, five. So it's got five gears and all the way down is neutral and all the way up is fifth. Interesting situation, it's pretty cool. Um, it's just kind of a neat system and how it works. And you can see they put these um, angle cut gears to be quiet. If they're straight cuts, a lot louder. So the angle cut is a little bit uh, quieter. And then this is crazy. So this is the shifter and that is the Kickstarter. Let's come over here, <clears throat> see what we see here. So that just goes in there. There's a flywheel. Uh, would be impressive if the thing sparks. <laughs> uh, like really impressive. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm sure we're gonna have to fiddle with that. I don't know. This project guys, by the way, this gentleman is down to spend some money, uh, which is cool, but getting a little further in this, this could be quite a thing and might be out of my wheelhouse, but I'm definitely interested in at least trying because I think it's cool and I really, really like it. Um, so uh, yeah, let's see how the kickstart works because I can't really tell. Like I said, it's pretty interesting that they put the shift shaft out here, but then that is the kicker. Hang on. That means the kick mechanism is inside the cases. <laughs> that is definitely not how they would run it these days. That's pretty, that is crazy actually. Um, yeah, that's nuts. So we are now going to let this sit overnight and we'll be back tomorrow. Um, it'll look like nothing to you guys. In fact, uh, it'll be about like this. All right, it's the next day. Um, I'm super bummed out because actually last night as um, I was getting ready to leave, uh, Richie and I both uh, put wrenches on the crankshaft, me on this side, him on that side, and we reefed on it. And sure enough, we actually got the thing to break free. So um, I want to show you something. It's pretty rad. And there's probably no way to see it right there, but that is sparking. So. I'm pretty excited. There's obviously not a ton of compression, but it's not bad. I'm really super hopeful that if we spray enough penetrating lube, we keep doing this, uh, maybe get some two stroke oil in there. Uh, we can actually get this thing to fire up without having to take the, uh, the motor apart. Uh, mainly cause I don't know where we're going to get parts and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that is all going to work. So, um, but now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this carburetor, try to get it off of, these cables, which is not going to be easy to do because the slide seized in there and it's the whole thing. Uh, but if I can, I'm going to get that thing off and into the ultrasonic, get the ultrasonic super, super hot, get that in there and try to cook that thing. Cause it's got some disgusting, disgusting old gas in it. Uh, and then same with the tank. Uh, it's not going the ultrasonic, but we're going to pull it off, probably fill it with, um, uh, solvent, uh, let it sit for a long time, wash it out and wash it out, wash it out. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do this. This thing is awesome. I really hope we can get it running. Um, if it gets out of my wheelhouse, there's a guy here in town that specializes in, uh, vintage stuff and we will be sending it to him, uh, because I mean, that's what he does. Uh, I will do what I can and we'll get as far as we can. And if it comes up, you know, getting to be outside of my wheelhouse, we'll get it to Marty. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's, let's do this. All right, guys, we're still cooking the uh, carburetor for that thing and trying to get the flywheel off the other side. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, that's probably going to be a long project. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel because that might be here for many, many weeks while we work on it and do other things in between because he's obviously not in a big hurry. It's middle of winter and uh, it's just a big project, which is super fun. But now we're going to do uh, what we were going to do last week on this. We're going to put a counter shaft seal and a shift shaft seal in this YZ450. Uh, pretty simple job, but I'll show you guys how we do it. All right, guys, easiest way to do this is just to remove the chain from the bike. Uh, you can actually do it by just loosening the sprocket, you know, the front nut on the sprocket and get it off. Uh, but then it's, it's just a pain. So it's way better to just yank this thing off. So I'm going to take this master link apart, get this chain out of the way. Uh, then we'll remove the uh, front sprocket and the shifter, get everything out of the way, and get it really, really cleaned up.
So guys, on YZs, they have this extra cover to kind of protect the seal. So we got two eights, you gotta get off of there too. So we'll get that out of the way. Uh, and like I said, get the shifter off and we'll get this cleaned up as good as we can. It's freezing cold outside, so we're not gonna take it outside and wash it, but I'm gonna super douche that thing with uh, brake cleaner. All right, guys, got them all cleaned up. Check it out. <clears throat> Looks pretty good, uh, considering how dirty everything else is. So now we got to pull this bushing out, which usually a nice set of these Nipex Cobras work good because they kind of squeeze in evenly if you get them far enough open. Oh, there we go. Ha ha, got it. normal style seal puller just come in here be kind of careful that fell out of there basically so there you go now there is an o-ring down let me show you see if i can show you guys real fast so right in there there's an o-ring in a groove you got to get that out of there and replace it that thing will cause a lot of problems with leaking uh, the seal definitely bad on this one but i've seen those be the whole cause so i'm gonna pick and we'll dig that thing out all right we are going to use a uh, hot rods kit uh you know these things are good i haven't had any real problems uh, there's a lot of things that these guys are making these days that are not my favorite but these kits seem to be really good And the nice thing is it comes with the seal, the bushing, new O-ring, and the new um, bendable washer to hold the thing on. Start with the O-ring, super easy. Seal next, and uh, <coughs> I'm gonna get a socket that's just the right size to just tap that sucker in. You can check this out when you Yeah money There's like that. <laughs> yeah like they have bullet birds <laughs> yeah all right got this all done that's ready to go i'm not putting anything on here because i want as much room and clean as i can now we got to pop that seal out this one is probably not leaking but we got a new one uh so we're gonna obviously put it in and it's really easy to do so these ones are a little bit tougher guys i'm actually gonna grab a really small drill bit and i'm gonna poke a tiny little hole in there and get a pick in there and pop it out that size drill bit with a little bitty, I don't know what size it is. Doesn't matter, it's little. I'm gonna go in real careful. Let me show you what this looks like, guys. You see right there, that little hole. Sorry, it's not focusing. Focus, there we go. So just a tiny little hole. Now I can get the pick in there. And pry that sucker out, maybe. If the pick will hold up. It's kind of a crappy pick. I'm gonna get a better one. There we go. Snap on pick instead of a crappy uh, SRT pick. <laughs> That's really interesting, guys. So the other pick looks the same. It folded up like a cheap tent. This one worked great. All right, guys, got a brand new OEM uh, shift shaft seal. Uh, on these, when you're going over a spline shaft, uh, I always take a little bit of grease, rub it on there so it's nice and smooth it goes over. Oh, he's nuts, dude. Sweet. There we go, guys. Check it out. Nice, fresh seals. Obviously, a little oil run down there. That's from when this was out. So, I'm um, going to bolt everything back together clean this really, really well so that uh, when we run it, we can make sure we're not leaking anymore. Ah, that's one of the things, guys, if you own a shop or you're thinking about starting your shop or you're working for your friends, uh, to save yourself lots of serious like grief and hassle, just when you get done with something, like try really hard to test it really well. Um, I've been guilty of that in the past of just trying to get things out. I'm like, yep, that was it, okay, great, fired up. Okay, it looks good and you send it down the road and then it either something else crops up that you didn't notice or you didn't fix it because 
gasket tour, whatever. Um, just make sure you like do your best to test it really well. Now it's cold here and snowy, so I'm gonna have to run this thing inside um, and get it nice and warm, but um, I think we should be good to go. All right, guys, now I am trying out a new camera. Uh, my buddy Don Funk, who if you watch the Gospel Two Wheels, uh, he's let me borrow this thing in motion track. So I'm gonna try walking around here and see how this works. Um, I just wanna see how it works. I might be thinking about one of these things. You guys let me know what you like, what you think about this little short segment that I'm gonna use it on. Um, anyway, to what we're doing. So I got my bike up here. Uh, as you guys know, I like Kickstarters. I wish I had a Kickstarter on this bike. I wish there was a backup on every bike. I really think there should be, but there's not. Uh, and you also know that I had problems with a start button um, before. It stuck on and Zach did too. Uh, I have replaced those now. I've gone to a Nihilo style uh, start button, which is actually just the old school style start button uh, and then a kill switch. They're, they're just buttons. They just connect two wires. There's no micro switch, no nothing. I'm really happy about them. But because this is uh, fancy pantsy and all that electronics, I worry about crashing and breaking those buttons off, right? Because they're not super robust, but they're, you know, they're pretty strong, but you know, be easy enough to flip the bike over, break a button off, and then you're screwed. So um, I already installed it. I didn't film installing it, uh, but I installed a Nihilo um, aftermarket start switch or a Nihilo auxiliary start switch. Hang on, let me grab the information. There it is, the Nihilo SOS uh, secondary on switch made in the US, which is rad. And uh, that's what it looks like in the package, guys. Super cool. I tucked mine right up underneath here. I put a little bit of Velcro. You can reach under here and it's like that. And obviously the other switch still works. Crazy easy install. You just find the trigger wire. I took it right off the uh, um, starter solenoid. I took the, the, it's the red wire. You'd think that'd be just the power, but actually you ground that wire to, to hit this thing. So I took that and then I put the, the other part, you know, cause really that button is just a connecting to two wires just like the start and stop buttons so i took the one hooked it to the red wire on the solenoid and then the other one <clears throat> i hooked it to just the battery ground i took all the extra cable i didn't cut it down rolled it up um, taped it up and tucked it underneath there i think that's cool it's just up out of the way it's totally waterproof anyway so i think it should be good it's protected from any kind of big crash i mean if i break that We've got other problems. So. All right, guys, that's the end of the week, end of the schlog. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new here and you stuck through this whole thing to the end of this video, consider subscribing to the channel. It's an awesome channel. We do our very, very best to do a great job. I think most people think uh, that it's pretty rad once they subscribe. So think about that. Um, if you really want to help us out a ton, consider a membership. Uh, you can help give us just a little bit of money every month. Uh, try to grow this thing bigger and bigger and bigger so that we can do even cooler things, uh, like even maybe racing projects with pentons and things like that. So I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. I hope you get out, spread the gospel of two wheels. And I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but way more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes.